Eli comes on and says, yeah, man, I signed a lease. I got a store. What the F? I mean, <laughs> seriously, I guess this is just the way it is. Every time I hold one of these, there's probably seven more people. I'm going to take all the hands down. And I literally, if you got yourself a free damn laundromat, just raise your hand and I guess we'll call on you. I, I'm, I, I mean, interrupt it. Joe, Dan, you're one of those guys that I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to cruise up there. Uh, I really look forward to meeting you and the family. We've exchanged some gifts back and forth and you're in Kentucky whiskey country. Yes, sir. So bourbon trail. I, I will probably not remember much of the trip, but I'm, I'm definitely coming up. I'm impressed Cigars that, and bourbon. God bless America. I'm impressed that having done this for a dozen years and you've got eight stores working on number nine, that my silly DVD helped you. Is there one thing that you could say that you had no knowledge of when you watched it? Um, yes. Um, you know, there's a few things, uh, you, you know, I don't know if I would have attended. Well, we have attended laundries. Um, and I was amazed how you could take your attendance and, and bring them in and it's their own business. And, and, and I was like, wow, that really works. But I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm shocked by that one. And I could see me doing that in certain laundromats because, you know, they're running yeah, their own it's, operations. It's hard to you rip that Band-Aid off isn't it? You know, you're going to, it is, it's, it's, it's very good. You've got my number, uh, dude. We need to talk about it. And literally I have the, sh the spiel ready. I like the apple cart. You go into the laundry and you in a golf shirt, don't dress the way you normally do with your work pants. And you sit on an apple cart and you stare at the attendant. And I assume some of your stores have two shifts. You've probably got more than one person working there and you're paying them a, a decent wage, but pick the best one. So whoever the real rock star is, the good employee, probably going to be a woman because wash, dry, fold works best. I don't want to give my skivvies to some random dude, you know, the motherly <laughs> concept. Sit on an apple cart and look her right in the eye and say, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is you're fired. And the bad news, I'm going to give you this business. Then show her the books. Show her how much the place earns. You are earning X. Last month you made X. This is how much I brought in. Now you and I both know. I'm going out on a lot of limbs, right? But your wash dry folds break even, do they not? If? Uh, mine, maybe in one store. That, that's the problem. I have so much. That's more, my, my business through the week is wash dry fold. It's unbelievable. Um, okay. But. In so you areas, focus on it to a level. Areas. You focus on it to a level that it's doing well for you. I have, but okay. but I do notice on one particular store that I do need to do this in uh, okay. maybe two two stores, and, and then and then the other thing that I learned on that DVD is vending, vending, vending. What a waste of my time it's been all this all these years. I got rid of. I'm, I'm like, okay, I called Pepsi. Bring your machine in here. I'm not loading this thing down. It's not worth my time. You're Thank kidding you, me, Danny. You're kidding me. I'm not kidding you. I'm no, I'm not kidding you. Now, if my kid wants to bring a, a little candy machine in and learn a little something, he's more than welcome to do that. But yeah. no, no more candy machines. None of that crap. I'm so it breaks. It, it, you'll go in there. They'll have gum up under your machines. They'll have candy all over the store. Uh, this took my quarter, but I mean, you know, give me a break. And I, I can't believe how much headache I allowed that to be. You know, now I have quarter pushers in all my stores. So that's, that's a different animal. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. They do well. But, but it, bro, it, it, when I looked at laundromats, geez, 15 years ago, I'm a problem solver. Whether it's problem solving in that realm or the laundry thing. When I decided to do this, I looked at the potential issues. And one of those was employees. And I said, nope, yet nine nits, don't want it. No fucking way. How do I fix it? And the first store that I bought for 250,000, we all have those stories where we got screwed, raped, robbed. And you either immediately try to sell that store or you retool it and change everything. And then like you go after 
eight or nine more. When I saw the problem, the first store that I had, I went in and it was a young couple being paid under the table. I saw red. I see food on the table when I see people working for me that aren't working. Hourly employees do as little as possible for a paycheck. I kicked the kid's feet off of the table and I said, get the fuck out. And I didn't have a plan. The next day, I put a contract employee in the store. The next day. He would end up working in that store for eight years. I didn't want to fill a Dixie Narco soda and snack machine, have to throw the stuff out. I didn't want to spend my time doing that. And so instantaneously, hey, once you've built, you've got so many stores now, you can call Pepsi and say, hey, get them out. Get rid of them, bring a small vending company in and get eight, nine, 10%. You get a check in the mail, man. But <laughs> preaching to the choir, that means the world to me. It really does. A guy like you who's so prevalent in the Kentucky market and having taught you something through a couple of pieces of plastic, really, dude, means the world to me. I got one more. Okay. Voting, 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 voting. I agree with you 100%. But since the DVD, I went and I've reevaluated all my stores. What are the problems? Yes, I love that DVD. What's the yeah. what are the problems? Uh, what it. one thing is folding, folding, folding. Okay, you have to people have need room to fold. People need room to fold, and uh, you know, right now they can't sit. But they, my stores all have plenty of folding, and I went and assessed all the stores. I had a couple more uh, uh, folding tables in two two of the stores since since watching your DVD. Because it is you very don't important. know, you don't know why you're losing money and you don't know why you're losing clientele to other stores. You don't know. You can't know. You could sit in the store all day long or God forbid, stare at the camera system all day and try to watch people flow. And you're still not going to know. You're not going to know. So all I try to do is get ahead of that by saying, what do we do in laundromats, bro? Wash dry and leave no wash dry and fold and i remember when we talked you said i can't believe that you spent an entire you know 20 minutes on folding but it, to me that's one third of this business yes great great job great job Thanks, seriously man. stay on with me joe dan and uh we're gonna shoot the shit with some other folks here Logan, hi Logan. Hey Danny, where are you? Uh, where are you calling from? Salt Lake City, Utah. Salt Lake City. Do a lot of competition shooting with my kid up there. Oh really? That's neat. Your name sounds familiar. What's our history? Um, I just got the DVD a few days ago. Finished it. Emailed you, uh, and uh, I told you I'm going to be calling you soon. Okay. So we're going to get on a on a consultation. Yes, sir. Well, I'm going to have I'm also going to have you talk to the the landlords for me. I don't want to do that. Decision made. Well, good. Can I ask? Let me be selfish for a minute. When you okay. saw my uh, when you saw my pricing, when we emailed you what I charge for my time and we emailed you what I charge to make calls to landlords. First, a question. And. Okay. You understand how many landlords will I call on your behalf? As many as it takes until okay. I get the deal done. Good man. And when you saw the pricing structure, what did you think? You just well, told me you could pay it, so I just. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, at first, you know, it was a little bit of a sticker shock, I guess. But I, you know, I, I looked at what you said you were going to do for me and how far you're willing to do it. Same with, with the call. You know, it, it says on there that, that it's a three hour minimum, but many times you go much, much more. And and uh, and, and I've seen your videos. I watch tons of your YouTube channels and I, I realize that you you give a lot and you're not just about the money. And you you really care about the, the person and the business. So it's not about I, the money. It's about the shit I can buy with it. <laughs> Thank and you, Logan. And, you know, again, I'm call me ballsy. I, I think 
I've been, I've been called the world's greatest salesman. I've been called a marketing genius, but this here shit sells itself. Yeah. Just being real with folks. And I'm going out on another limb. When I ask you, what did you, what did you think? Uh, a gentleman hired me and had an address in New York City, New York, New York. I'm from Brooklyn. So when you see New York, New York, you say, oh, wow, okay. Is this a mailbox? Is this a PO box? Nobody lives in Manhattan. Nobody lives in the city, right? Well, he right. did, and he does well. And I asked him the same question on a consult, and he said, oh, well, I thought you're crazy. And what he meant was you don't charge enough for what you are willing to do. Uh. Understand this, Logan. You're going to do the hard work. You're out there doing the lion's share of the work. You wake up flat on your back in a hospital. You don't remember what the hell happened and your whole family's there and you're alive. And then the surgeon walks in and you say, oh, I want to shake your hand. God bless you. Thanks for saving me. You were in a car crash. But who really saved you? The passerby that dialed 911. Right. The helicopter pilot who learned how to fly in Vietnam. We, it's not just the surgeon. It's the nurses that closed the wounds. Hell, it's the guy in the basement that collects the bills and made sure the operating theater lights were on, right? It takes a village. And I'm just a village idiot. So I don't deserve the handshakes. You're going to go out and scout the existing stores all over Utah. And then we're going to beat up those landlords. I want to get you in that call club. That's badass. Uh, we haven't consulted yet. No. So abuse me. Use me. Use my time. Luke is on here. Daniel Albrand is on here. Uh, we have a power packed panel. Joe Dan Reed. What do you want to know? I want to know uh, what what's the average time of getting into one? I say I, I find one tomorrow. I call you. We we get in there. How long does it take to actually get it up and going? Great question. Somewhere between never and <laughs> uh, tomorrow. So I will also say, and you know, not a standard answer, but I'm not I'm not a corporate bullshitter. That's why I like you. Well, I like you too. <laughs> Thanks. I won't say X amount of time is the fastest someone got in the store. Why? Because numbers are finite. Yeah. Math doesn't lie. And literally, when I say a number, you're gonna you're gonna run with it. You're gonna turn. In, are you married? Yes, sir. So you're gonna tell the wife, "Well, we'll be in the store in X number of days." No, I'm not saying that. Okay. This is work. How do you end up being Luke Williford? How do you end up being Joe Dan Reed? Yeah, that's my goal. We start now. We start yesterday. Uh, is there urgency? Are you trying to pay the bills? Don't do that. That's, no. That's, that's not how this works. Right. I have had people quit their job in order to go after laundromats. And I don't find out until later when the desperation starts to come through. No. I tell my clients my students and my friends and family know this well. I'm always on the horn saying, I'm not a motivational speaker and I'm not your counselor. These stores are like potato chips. So let's get you in the first one, pay my stupid fee. Oh, yeah. And let's get on the phone. We're driving up to ski and I'll, I'll, I love to talk while I'm in the car. bro. I would love it. Stay on here. Uh, any other burning questions other than the, the how many, and you know, I'm skirting the answer, right? A few, I'm not going to tell you. No, I don't know. Have you no, I appreciate the honor. Yeah, no. Do you have a store in mind? Do you have a store you're excited about? No, I, like I said, I just got the DVD a few days ago. I, um, I, I've been wanting a business for a while, but I saw your video on YouTube just a few weeks ago. And I talked to my brother about opening a laundromat with him. But I just couldn't afford, you know, what they say it costs to buy. And thank God that I found your video. So, but, but my other question is, do, do I want to, like, build an empire, have all the same names? Um, you sure. know, like, Luke, is Luke, all, are all 38 of his stores the exact same name? Yes. And let me, let me give you a partial answer, and then we can bring Luke back if he's still here. Uh, for when you start off, start small. If the okay. sign says Harry's Laundry, leave the sign. You know, it might be three thousand dollars to change that sign. At first, who cares? Right. Uh, your LLC. I I work with and and personally know billionaires, and they just have shit tons of LLCs. It's like a Christmas tree. The top LLC owns everything else. 
I'm sitting in my home that I own, and if a kid falls on his bicycle in the front yard, I can't be sued. I don't own this house. Right. The Daniel D'Angelo Trust owns this home. So you'll That's build LLCs, and those LLCs won't matter. It'll be the, and I love your name, dude, Logan. Who knew? Snicked, right? I used to read comics. And That's right, yeah. <clears throat> we had absolute tons of fun, and uh, Billy is working on editing all of that. I, I love to make the cell phone videos and get them out for you guys right away. But we've got three or four cities, and now it looks like I'm going to to Texas to visit Eli. God bless America. Logan, stay on. Can you mute your phone? We can mute yes, your, sir. Uh, okay, stay on with us, and if if, uh, if your name comes up, we'll, we'll bullshit a little bit. Kevin Stillwell. Kevin, what's going on, my I'm brother? I'm here. Hey, what's going on, my man? <laughs> How many laundromats you got? Well, I spoke to you in November. I was on uh, the call, and I have one. Did I help? The DVD was very, very helpful. Well, that's kind of me. <laughs> how How is it going? You opened a business during COVID? Oh, my God. Yep. November 1st. Congratulations, bro. Why didn't you Thank email you. me and say you wanted your money back? Because I appreciate everything on that DVD and I think it's well worth it. <laughs> You're funny. I, I started offering the 100% money back guarantee so that people would feel more comfortable in making that you know commitment. I mean, it's not Jumanji. You're not playing this DVD in the back of the minivan. It's information and that's really what you're buying. But what that turned into that money back guarantee turned into being able to hear from folks like you, Kevin, that say, hey, man, I did it. Uh, I, I, I want to notify you, you, Danny, that I did it. And guys like you don't reach out. So it's killing me, man. It's not about the money. I really want to hear the story. Where's your story? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my story's in Rome, New York. Damn, dude. And tell me about the lease. How does the lease look? Um, lease is not bad considering it's my first one. The the lease is uh, it's, a, it's ten years with a five year option. So if I want to get out after five years, I can walk away and say, you know, this was not a good good deal. Well, we you know we live in that fear, but you have two two choices, three choices, right? Do nothing, go after more stores, or right. Build that store up. And we talked about this at the inception of the call. How do we sell? How do we get out? Were you here at the beginning of the call? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so you can sell your laundromat, but you're not selling a bill of goods to some poor lack, uh, some poor lackey. You're selling a good, profitable laundromat on an uptick to someone who knows what the hell they're doing. You can sleep at night after that. Well, unfortunately, that the way is, my... Sorry about that. Unfortunately, in my lease, I can't sell the business at all. Oh, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You need to have so me have that, a look at that. That, that. that is plausible, but might not, might not even, I mean, they can put anything they want. We talked about this on that call, on this call as well. They can put anything they want in the lease. Okay. Right, right. So, so, the way, so these are my three options, Danny. This is what I have. In five years, I can either buy the building which it has uh, two apartments upstairs, kind of like, you know, what uh, Brandon has going on in, o in Ohio with some apartments. Uh, it's It has a situation where I can just walk away after five years or I can renew for another five. So that's kind of what my options are. No, I get it. Why are you on this webinar? What do you want from the panel? What, what can I answer for you? You know, I, I've met with two distributors in the last two months, and, you know, I've been on your calls. I've heard about, you know, how much you say the machines are, which is a thousand per per 20 pounds or per pound. And that rule of thumb can save your life, right? But I I say this to the distributors and they laugh at me saying, oh, no, 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 these machines are way more than that. So, I mean, here in upstate New York, there's not a lot of distributors that I can work with. And I've already had two come to my store. I, I'm kind of like, because the prices are not what we were talking about in the call. 
How do you how do you get to that point? You own a store. You called. You you need to start from scratch and call every single distributor in the tri-state area. You said, well, I'm up in Rome, New York, and so there's not a lot of distributors. Well, you're wrong. Uh, everyone can come to the table and give you a, a quote. And they're rolling their eyes and saying that I love. Have you ever mentioned my name to a distributor? That's loads of fun. That is yeah, I did. Yeah, fun. last last night I did. They they oh, chuckled. Let, let me stop you. There's no no such thing as free or never heard of him. What what was the answer? Um, we talked about retooling every seven years, and they're like, that's that's just a myth. A myth, huh? These machines, these machines, these machines are built to last, and they said, you know, there's no reason to retool these. These are good for at least 20 years. Wow. Okay. How many laundromats have, have my students taken over with 20 year old equipment? I don't know if exactly. Luke is still on here, but uh, not afraid to have that discussion. And also, we do 15 year terms. The difference is, and you can laugh at that, Kevin, because the difference is in a very well run store, you can say that a that a checker cab will last for 20 years too, right? Right. If it's where Debbie's from in a small town in Eastern Oregon and they're only getting one call a day, sure. But if it's in Manhattan, 300,000 miles a year can happen. So how are they telling you that that's a myth? The guys just, they love to hate. And right, they have right. their way with the industry for far, far too long. That's the first time I use the word industry on this webinar. Eh, not a fan. They want to, let's go back a little bit, Kevin. How many distributors did you have physically come to your store? I've had two, Speed Clean and, and Hitch, and then last night was Dexter. Okay. And right uh, Dexter. yeah. Dexter, great equipment. Hips and Speed Queen are the same company. Are you aware they're made in the same factory? Yeah. They're just branded different. Correct. Yep. Yeah. And we, I haven't picked on anybody on this call, but you need to right now get the actual quotes from all of them. And then you need to evaluate those quotes. Send me an email. It's all about price because these guys are going to disappear. There's no Cadillac in the industry. There's no Hyundai. They hate that I say this stuff. They hate it. Right. And if it's right. such a phenomenal business, did you ask them? Why don't you run laundromats? Did you ask them? They, yeah, they both they both they, they both do have laundromats. Okay. They both have they both have several. So they're your co competition. Well, they're How hours does that away make from sense? me. Well, they're <laughs> hours away from me. They're not in my area. One one okay. guy, he's he's out of Massachusetts and the other is uh, about an hour away from me. Daniel, are you with us? Daniel, uh, talk, to, talk to Kevin in New York about your love for distributors and the way they operate. Uh, I'm dealing with them now, and I wish I didn't have to. Does that count? I hear you. I hear you. Necessary evil. Um, it is. It's a necessary evil. They're, I mean, at the end of the day, they're looking they're all just looking for a payday what you got to do is play them against each other that's play them against each other get the prices down and um i mean they're they're all you know, like i said they're all just looking for a payday they're going to jack the prices up as far as the as far as far as you're willing to pay uh, yeah, exactly I, I have a i have a heartbreaking story and I'm a video guy. I need to make a video. I'm not, it, it, I'm champing at the bit to get it done, but I'm not sure how to best attack this issue. I spoke to Luke and Lee Williford about it because our conversation, whether we were having oysters and cocktails or sitting down in our dress shirts and, and having the interview, it all steered back to the austerity of the distributor and the way it all works. And some of it just doesn't make sense. Why is it that no one knows the price for this equipment unless they've heard from Danny? Why is it that X thousands of people go to the clean show in Nolens every other year? And if you catch them exiting that show, you say, hey, what was your favorite part? 
oh, I like the booth babes or the bubbles that were coming out of the Speed Queen booth or the conversation or Danny D'Angelo's seminar. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Ask all thousand of those people, how much does this machine cost? And show them a photograph of a 40 pound front load. They don't know. The industry runs on equipment and the distributors want to make a hefty profit. And I'm not saying that's bad. That's fantastic. If you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, Kevin, and you talk to a salesman for 45 minutes, wife in tow, they know you're ready to buy. Oh, absolutely. You don't have any excuse. You can't get away, right? There's the wife. There you are. 45 minutes looking at a washing machine. And then you say, come on, man, you can do better. Well, shit, I can't. That's the price. Does the salesman care if you buy it? Not really. No, nope, not really. He's not a commissioned salesman. It doesn't matter to him. If you do make the purchase, what happens? Little robots come out and deliver it to your house, and then a chit is signed, and another machine comes from Wisconsin and goes on the shelf. That's all. Laundromat equipment is different. Commercial laundromat equipment is different. These guys will come and visit your store every month of the year if you let them. And have you had flyers already show up? I know Daniel has. Buy this equipment. No, not yet. No. Buy this equipment. Here's a price. Eventually, the operator wilts and they say, fine. Here, sign on the line. Buy this equipment. Get this equipment. Change your store's outlook. Look, we're going to give you two 40 pounders for only nine grand a piece, and we'll install them for free. And then Mr. Kim, who works in his store 75 hours a day, finally wilts and gives up and takes the pen. That's why when we scout, you walk into stores and you notice that there's two brand new pieces of equipment that stick out like a sore thumb. That's why. Did they change the outlook of that store? No. Did they allow Mr. Kim to make? A huge profit that year? No. Why does it make sense? It doesn't. What kind of cars do you like, Kevin? You want a Corvette? No, not really. I'm more of a Porsche guy myself. All right. The brand new Targa 911 is coming out. Where are you going to, you've got a wild hair, you're going to go buy this thing. Where are you going to find the price? On the internet. Sure. No salesman will call or visit. You don't have to go to a dealership. On the internet. On the internet. Porsche is pretty smart, right? They're going to have you stuck on that website for 28, 29 minutes. They're good. The web designers and builders and developers for Porsche, top tier, right? Billion dollar company. Speak several languages. They're going to get you on that website and do what? You're interested, you're intrigued, you might be ready to buy, you're, you're there for a reason. I'm coming to a point. Start building the car. You want the bigger engine, you want the turbocharger, you want the fat tires, right? You want black on black with leather interior, right? You're 28 minutes into your visit on the website and you're looking at the car and you go, nah, not black, red. Ooh, that's the one. Then they tell you. $117,000.54. Boom. Did you have to give your email address? No. Did you have to visit a dealership? No. No. Give a blood sample? Pee in a cup? Porsche understands how to do sales and how to do it right. And they give you the MSRP. One more click and you give them your email address. Good Lord. <laughs> You're going to be up your ass, but that's okay. It's not the point. Can you find the price for commercial washers and dryers anywhere? No. I've, I've, the only way I've ever managed to get a price out of anybody. So I have to call up a distributor. At first, I got to find a damn distributor somewhere close to me, which the closest one to me in Indianapolis is Chicago, three hours north four hours north. So I got to call a distributor. I got to set up an appointment, have them come down and 
see my store and then they're going to come down and then they come down they look at my store they see how many machines i got and then they want to measure it and see how many new machines they can fit and how much how much bigger they can go i can go in my in my store then they're going to go back to their little place up north and then they're they're going to put together this nice big fancy quote and add in dexter live for free just for just because i'm spending two hundred and fifty three thousand dollars with them thank you for that right um yeah it's it's a pain man it's 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 a it's a whole mess just to get it just to get a damn price why why do they do that do you know well yeah because they want to keep their price they, they don't they don't want everybody knowing their pricing they want to keep their pricing on the dl and they want to make sure that um they can charge me whatever whatever they want and i have nobody else to go to 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 compete unless i go to another brand didn't you try to bring this up on the internet oh, oh i did and I, if i if i recall correctly the uh the person that was oh, the person that ran that page actually deleted my conversation I don't hear you saying holy. Yeah, there you go, Kevin. Holy shit, right? Yeah, yeah, right. So I mean, so and the dryers that I was quoted uh, on my quote was seven thousand for a thirty pound uh, double stack. Email me your quotes. By All the right. way, you don't and even need thirty pounders, bro. They're gonna try to charge you thirty. They're gonna try to charge you fifty pounder prices for thirties. They've been building stores the same way for 80 years, right? An entire bank of 30 pound stacks and 250s. I like to put all 45s in my store. Then you can go ahead and advertise. What are you gonna say? We have the most drying capacity in town. Chris Haley, hi, Christopher. Hi, how are you, Dan? How's it going, brother? Fantastic. Chris, what's the story? Do you have a laundromat? Uh, no, Dan, but I intend to sign a long-term lease that is commensurate and appropriate for a laundromat. <laughs> you are Nicely a man. <laughs> you are uh, a man. No, uh, I, I actually raised my hand just to kind of push myself to the front of the uh, mosh pit at the concert. You uh, bastard. I know. Where are you, call, I, where are you calling from? Connecticut. Okay. I actually just emailed you two days ago. Oh, shit. All right. Uh, you have seen the DVD? Yes, sir. Twice. Yes, sir. Twice. All right. Well, bump those numbers up. Here you are talking to me. What can what can we, the panel, help you with, Christopher? Uh, two things. One, your DVD, the golden rule is a dollar a foot. Does that vary at all by region calling from Connecticut? Um, and yeah, gotcha. Has that golden number changed at all since that DVD was made? And is that based off of cams and is gross or, or? Very good inside baseball. We updated the DVD last week, and right now, you watch the DVD and you see I'm fat, I'm skinny, I have a beard, I don't, I'm tan, I'm not. We've been altering and changing what is important in that for 13 years. So understand, I'm not stamping those. They don't come from, if I could spin the camera around, I have a, a DVD burner in my office here, which is going away, God bless America, very soon. Uh, if you were a landlord, you'd be, at, you'd be telling me the same thing. Dollar a square foot doesn't work here. You've seen my call club calls? You sent, not, me a free, you sent me a free year of them, brother. Oh, shit. Well, don't say that out loud on here. Everybody's going to want that shit. Man. Ah, well, you know. Uh, I've been building those for a very long time. So seeing those, binging on those, watching those, you'll see. Yes, Connecticut, the tri-state area, New York, L.A., and everywhere in between. It's the same. Less in many cases. Okay. Negotiating is an argument, Christopher. You don't want to be my wife. Negotiating is an argument. The landlord says 275 is what we charge because of blank. Whatever the blank is. I'm not a professional anything. I don't have any initials after my name. Since Navy Missile School, I haven't been a pro at any shit. I'm just a guy who likes to argue on the phone for you. I'm a laundromat guy. So when I talk to that landlord, that moment that they say, listen to the landlord call club calls, listen intently. I know I should stop the tape and go back and say, this is what I'm doing. We're streaming all of that now. We're doing it. 
to explain what's going on in those calls. When a landlord says, this is what we charge because of the region. This is what we charge because it's Connecticut. We've got them because it's still a laundromat. You understand the differences. And I will go in to that diatribe, however lengthy it needs to be with that landlord, depending on what notes you're sending me. If you tell me that it's a standalone building, there's one plan of attack. If you tell me it's a small strip mall and there's a 27 year Mamacita's Mexican restaurant two doors down, it's a different plan of attack. I have to get those tools, okay? But here's the point. No, the region is not different because it's still a laundromat. Are you gonna pay more for the equipment or less because you're in Connecticut? No. Are you going to be able to charge more or less per pound of laundry because you're in Connecticut? No. When I speak to landlords, really what I'm doing in those four, five, seven, 10 minute calls, what am I really doing? Instilling confidence in two ways, in you and your future success and in the industry itself. Shit, I said it twice now. In the business itself. Before we hang up the phone, that landlord, he was thinking this is a horrible business with decrepit operators. The place is falling apart. It always has homeless people hanging out. I hate laundromats. I can't wait to get rid of it. Eight minutes later, he's hanging up the phone because Christopher hired Danny and we're talking to him and I'm all I'm doing is exuding confidence. And letting him know how terrible it is to put an optometrist in his space. I know you know all my lines. I love a guy like you because you remember my lines. I forget them myself. <laughs> It's not that it's bad for him to put an optometrist. Let's back up for the folks that are on here that don't know what the hell we're talking about. It's an argument. And the moment that landlord says X, I say Y. And I say this often, knowing how to negotiate is not the zig, it's the zag. There is no rebuttal. There's no, we're not selling newspapers. So when that landlord says, oh, no, 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 no. We're charging $2.75 a square foot because it's Connecticut, because it's the region, because that's what the market will bear. I love that because they've given me some meat on the bone. Two doors down is that 27 year landmark, the Mamacita's Mexican restaurant. Mr. Landlord, can I ask you, when's the last time you did your laundry in a laundromat? Never. Never. Common answer. When's the last time you ate at a restaurant? An hour ago. So you would eat at the Mexican restaurant that you're now charging three and a half dollars a square foot because every five years they come back hat in hand and you raise their rent, you hike it up 25 cents. There's a little back and forth, but they're not going anywhere. Neither is their business, neither is their clientele. We are different. Why? You yourself just took you out of the running. You would eat at that restaurant two doors down, but you would never step foot in this laundromat. You're not part of the market. Why do we need a buck a square foot? Because our debt service is astronomical. And you know I pump the numbers up. We are different not only from the Mexican restaurant who involves recipes, and getting the right product from the right vendors and putting it all together. I like to say Mexican food is just beans and rice and beef and chicken and it just depends how they put it together. Right? With our business, the argument is different because we have the debt service on the equipment. And I say again and again, every seven years we're retooling because in a well-run laundromat, you're going to beat the shit out of that equipment and it's going to reach end of life and we're going to retool it. It's built in. It's baked into the cake. What if the landlord says no? I'll ask you, real question, Christopher, what if he says no? Keep scouting. Fucking A. My two words were gonna be, so what? But I like yours. Keep scouting. This isn't the pretty girl at the bar that you fell in love with the first time you saw her and you're gonna marry that girl. It's not that white picket fence home on a hill with a negative edge pool that you've gotta have. Just business. We don't fall in love with these stores. And so many of these landlords I've dealt with, 
five, six years ago, seven, 10 years ago. They're coming back crawling. My phone likely is ringing right now, as it endlessly does, with landlords that call back, especially in January. Just like we get excited about new business ventures, so do landlords. They want to boot somebody out. And my job, my vocation, is to get that landlord excited about laundries again. Not bullshit, not with fluff. Baklava. That handshake is important. Making them understand through verbiage, through words. This is a phenomenal business. If you know what you're doing, then you do it right. My no. partner, Mr. Haley, is that guy. That's you. Email me, bro. You already did. Uh, now, is that is that also, do you hold to that even if it includes cams and taxes? Oh, yeah, yeah, good. <clears throat> the dollar, no. That's, it's not a gross lease rate. That's the difference. Triple okay. nets and cams, there's nothing we can do about that. And you'll have, rarely do we even have any more gross lease rates. And what we're talking about here inside baseball stuff, guys, is a dollar a square foot is the same as 12. There's 12 months in a year. So if you've got a 2,000 square foot facility, it's two grand a month. We think like tenants. So we're concerned about how much we have to pay every month. That's $2,000. Simple math. That's 24 grand a year. 12 months. So $1 per square foot is 12. It's the same thing. If you punch a hole in the wall and that white chalky shit comes out, got to go to Lowe's or Home Depot. Got to ask the guy, hey, where's the drywall? He's not going to look at you funny because in the contractor's test, it's not drywall, it's sheetrock, right? If you're from the Midwest, it's called gypsum board. Either way, he's going to point you to aisle one. One dollar equals 12. It's the same thing. And when we have these discussions, I'm careful, Christopher, if that landlord says, yeah, good, you know, we can do a dollar a square foot. Year one. There's going to be increases. Standard is 3% per year. We never do standard. This perfect storm, there is more inventory. And if you're really a fan, you know about Bob, the real estate guy, right? Oh, sorry. He was an insurance salesman. You know the Bob story? No, I don't. Oh, I got you. It's rare. Yes. There's a lot of Danny info out there, my brother. Look, I could do this forever. I really could. Thank you, Christopher, very much. Oh, thank you, seriously, man. Uh, I yeah. shot a packet of info on that on that location yesterday. I scouted 16 so far. I found the one that I put a packet together for. I emailed it to you. So whenever you can get to that, I'd love, I'd love to hop on the phone with you. Okay. Well, you have information on uh, consultation, yes? No, I don't. Oh, shit. All right. Well, don't send me information on the laundromat. I'm not going to look at that. I need to, we need to talk. And on it, you know, I'm not a bullshitter. Stores are all the same. We are looking for shitty, nasty, disgusting, filthy laundromats with broke ass equipment and poor operating procedures, right? Luke's gone. Luke Williford. Who wants to be that? I want to be that guy. So do I. I'd rather have my hair, though. It's a whole thing. Christopher, yeah, uh, go backflip, bro. Yeah. He he kind of he kind of janked it on the on the last one. God bless, man. Uh, look, I could do this all day, as you well know. And oftentimes, oftentimes, there's someone on here that really, really has an important question, and they just absolutely can't wait to ask it. Ruben, say hello. How you doing, brother? <laughs> never felt better. Never had more. Wow, I finally feel good guy. to hear your voice. Where are you calling from? Good. I'm calling from uh, California. And you hate my guts and you have a bone to pick. No, man. Yeah. I love what you do. Thank you, man. <laughs> oh, man, it, it's 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 such an honor to be on, you know, to be on this webinar. Like I said, man, I heard all the great stories. I have the DVD. Okay. I watched the DVD. I've scouted a couple of stores in my area. Um, I have one number um, that I that I have got like a week ago. Um, I really, really love what you do. Like I said, and, and I, and I, I have a landlord's a number. Fan. I'm a big fan. Okay. I'm a really big fan, big fan. Are you going to call the landlord? No, I'm not because I don't want to blow the cover on, you know, what I'm trying to do here. And, um, you know, I've seen on your stories, a couple of people, you know, shot themselves in the foot trying to do that. 
And I know from, you know, my standpoint of view that you're the guy to go to that gets that handled. Look, you know? let, let me touch on that. You're, you're an intelligent guy. You're well-spoken. I'm certain you could negotiate and bump around in the dark a little bit and you could do a good job. But do you really want to do a good job with a document that's going to last 15 years? And uh, what are on the first call, what must you say? On the first call, you have to mention not only the rate of rent, you have to argue with that landlord. And let's just say that he only owns one small strip mall with five businesses, right? And he's 80 right. years old. Well, he's a friggin' professional. He's probably negotiated 100 leases in his years. So I'm with you. I agree. And a lot of guys like you and a lot of multimillionaires that I deal with and, and brain surgeons that hire me, they feel sort of icky about hiring someone to do this job. I don't. I don't do my own taxes. That would be foolish. I don't want to know the tax code. I, I clean my own pool. So, yes, don't feel bad about it. Email me and I will call. But Ruben, if that falls apart, we don't know, right? That's a crap right. laundromat and the landlord wants a good future operator and that's you. But I don't know if that's the case. Neither do you. Right. When right. we call, that landlord could very well say, oh, you know what? We are going to put a Walmart in here. I'm not a shitty landlord. As a reason, <laughs> I don't have any tenants. I let them all go. Because Walmart's right. going to fuel up their bulldozers and push the place into the ground. The laundromat's the only one left because that guy's a schmuck. He won't redo his equipment. And I'm letting him pay half rent. When Walmart ringy dings, the place goes into the ground. I got 10 acres behind that wall, and it's all going to be a Walmart. What did we just do? We didn't waste six months sitting in the bushes with binoculars looking <laughs> at this laundry. We didn't chase the operator to his kid's private school don't do that let's make that four minute phone call now the gotcha. first time that is you know, i like your style got you brother like, how, 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 i like your style kid let's sign a lease how much <laughs> like i said man i'm a, i'm a like a like a, a stealth jet you know what i'm saying off of the radar in 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 the shadows you know what i'm saying uh ruben i like you what do you do for money I am uh, I am in healthcare. I've been in healthcare for six years. Why are you being um, so ambiguous? What do you mean? What are you a surgeon? What do I'm you do? What do you? No, no, no. You're I'm a, nurse. Uh, no, no. I'm a whole home health aide. So I have clients I'm around. I'm around. I've been thinking everybody's a nurse. Today. No, almost, almost though. But why laundromats? How did it pop into your head? Laundry mats, um, how it popped into my head was, you know, I've I've used laundry mats in the past. I do now still. Um, and I just decided, you know, one day that I wanted to look online. I wanted to see something that was a business that you could do on your own, something that you could run on your own and operate on your own. Um, I've been searching for something for years and I came across one of your videos. I just, you know, it was something that I had looked up and it, it was through real estate because I was, you know, interested in real estate. That didn't, you know, was kind of my which thing. Video, and then what, was, what hooked you in? Which video was it? Do you remember? I know there's a lot of them out there. Um, I think for me was the one where it was a it was a gal. She was the uh, I think a plum plum haired gal that said you know she was on one of your YouTube videos and talking about she found you and that she was you know very successful in the laundromat business. It cost Rose, her Rose in Florida. Rose, 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 Rose. Yes, yeah, yeah. she's an absolute badass. She was a high end shoe saleswoman for a hundred years, and her and her husband uh -huh. retired. They were going to spend 175000 every penny they had saved on a laundromat. Bought the DVD, found me, we got on the phone. No, no, no. They were literally about to take $10,000. Instead, they would spend half of that for equipment. And now they've got a very successful store. Life changing. Ruben, I think you're a fan and I like your style, my brother. You are the guy. Email me the instant this webinar is over because people are going to be signing up to get on the phone. Who is killing me? Who's making all that noise? No, no, yeah, that was a TV going on. <laughs> all right, man. What's the next step? The next step, brother. Um, like I said, I got the number. Um, I, and I've been in that laundromat. Um, it's got a lot of machines down in it, dryers are down in it. I did notice this time going back around that there was about 10 new washers that the guy had you know, installed and the other ones are just pushed aside. 
you know, like in, inside of the store. They're they're just old, that you know, store, old, old. That store may not happen for you because the guy is trying. I just talked on this call about what happens when you roll into a store and you see two or three new pieces of equipment, didn't I? Right. Yeah. Did you listen to that portion where the distributor I, I, has been heard, pounding this dude and finally, dude, that's what happened there. That might not happen, but what do we do then? We call the next and the next and the next. My time does not expire. Before you go and before I go, um, should I should I still be interested in this laundromat going forward or just of course, go to the next one? Minute, it's a five minute phone call, bro. Let's find out what's going on. Will do. Okay. This is, I'll an email academic, you, email. this is an academic exercise, and I'm not a professor. There will be no grade. You're trying to scoop up the trying is lying. You're attempting to scoop up these stores. Okay. I'm not going to beat you up. I'm not going to ask if you're prepped to call that landlord. Let me do it. Got you, brother. Appreciate it. I appreciate you. We walk away from more deals than we do. And Many times my students are excited about that store they're in love with. And this is not a love affair. And I talk about that often. I, there's, there's not enough time in the day to, to pound my desk and scream at you about this stuff. When I say it, I say it once and I move on. Don't fall in love with these stores. We're after the almighty dollar, yes. But the way to maximize those profits, get into the store right. It's a phenomenal business. We end up walking away from more deals than we do because they're not right. I'm on all the forums. I'm in the Facebook groups. I'm quietly like Ruben in the shadows. I'm back there listening, watching. Many times my name is mentioned and I still just read what people are saying. Good, bad or indifferent. The bad goes away. And I'm watching people that buy laundromats. I screen cap them. I follow them as friends. Six months, six years later. Does anybody know a good business broker? They don't know what they are doing. I don't know any other business like this. Where so many people have this inclination to own one of these places or two or 10, and they don't know what they're doing. You're here because you understand it's not what I'm about. I'm passionate about getting you into the right deal. We walk away from more leases than we sign. And you're excited about the store. You can't wait, you can smell the money, it's not good. The increases are too high. The rate of rent is exorbitant. It's not location. It's about signing a long-term lease. Then you have leaseholder equity. You own the place. Then retool it with other people's money. Look into what you are doing and how you are doing it and how you want to change and let me help in any way that I can. Email me. I'm Danny D'Angelo.